Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today's video is one that I've made before, but I do an updated version every couple of years because this is a question that I get so frequently, which is, how do you read so much? I am an avid reader. Last year I read over 400 books, which is the most that I have ever read in a year. And this is a question that I get asked a lot, which is, how do you read as much as you do? Or how can I read more? Or is this real? How is this possible? So every couple of years, I like to make an updated version of this video telling you how to read more if you want to. And honestly, that is a really important place to start. How to read more if you want to, because the reality is you don't have to. And if you have other things that you would rather spend your time doing instead of reading a lot of books, you can do that. And there is nothing wrong with that. I think as a society, we sometimes place reading in this elevated structure of like, moral hierarchy for hobbies. And I personally find that a little bit silly. I read for information. I read for entertainment. I read for escape and enjoyment. I read for a lot of different reasons. And some of the needs that books fill in my life, in my entertainment needs, are things that other people might be finding through watching a lot of television or movies, which is not something I do very much of. So if you're watching this and you're thinking, man, in theory, I would really like to read more, but I also like to spend a lot of hours every week watching television or movies or playing video games or scrolling through social media, that's okay. Like there is no moral imperative on you to read more unless you want to. That said, for people who are interested in increasing their reading and finding a way to integrate more of it into their life in a way that is sustainable for them, this video does have some tips that might help you out. Again, everybody is different. There's not a moral hierarchy here. And you are just as valid a reader if you read one book a month as if you read 30 books a month or anything in between. So I think that's an important place to start in this conversation. All of that being said, one of the biggest tips that I can give you if you want to read read more is do less of other things. So if you are spending a lot of time watching TV, watching movies, playing video games, or like doing other hobbies for entertainment, swap out some of that time schedule in time for reading. And this isn't an all or nothing situation. I do watch some television. It's just that on average, it's probably like three hours a week, which is not very much compared to most people. But you could schedule in more of that entertainment time for reading instead of doing one of those other things. And honestly, if you even set aside like an hour a day to read, you'd be surprised at how many books you can get through. Another thing I do is I read multiple books at once. I might be reading like five books in different genres and different formats, and that might seem like too much to some people, but you could try reading two two to three books at once in different formats, I would just recommend making them very different genres, especially as you're getting into this if you're worried about mixing up the stories. So for instance, you might be listening to a nonfiction title on audio, reading a fantasy novel for your physical book, and reading a romance as an ebook on your Kindle, right? Those are three very different kinds of stories that you're not going to get mixed up. If you get bored reading one of your books and you get in the mood for something else, you can just switch to a different format. And that does help overall increase the number of books that you're able to get to in a month, because you're not just like putting down the one book that you're reading because you need a break from it, and then you're not reading something else. Else. I might be reading a fantasy book and I'm like, I'm really liking this, but I need a break from it. I can put it down and I can listen to whatever audiobook I have going while I do other things, which is another tip multitasking. This isn't necessarily going to work for everybody. Our brains work and process differently. Some people have a really hard time listening to audiobooks and processing them, especially at higher speeds. Other people find that it's a game changer for them and it was exactly what they needed to increase reading in their life. Whatever works for you in your brain is great and I wouldn't feel bad if it's different from how other people are able to read, but I can tell you what works for me and what has worked for at least some other readers. A few years back I discovered audiobooks and 
for me, they were a game changer. I love audiobooks. They now make up about half of my reading every month. The rest is physical books and ebooks, but I listen to audiobooks all the time and I multitask. So I will listen to an audiobook when I'm walking to pick up my kids from school or when I'm going grocery shopping or when I'm cleaning the house or when I'm cooking or when I'm making thumbnails for videos. Like I will frequently have an audiobook going when I'm doing other things. Now some people would be listening to like music or podcasts. I don't do a whole lot of that. I mostly will listen to an audiobook and you know whatever you choose to listen to is totally fine and valid, but if audiobooks work for you you'd be surprised at how much time you can spend listening to it like waiting in line at the post office where you're not doing anything else and you could be reading and making progress on a book. Now one thing to note is that I have a pretty fast natural reading speed and my brain processes audio content very quickly as well. Because of that, I'm able to listen to audiobooks at more than just the regular speed, which again, makes it faster for me to get through them. I'm typically listening to an audiobook at anywhere from two and a half to three and a half times speed, depending on the narrator, depending on whether I'm reading the physical book alongside the audiobook. This is something I will sometimes do is a blended read, especially if it's something where I want to pay close attention and I don't want to get distracted. I find it really useful to listen to the audiobook while also reading along physically. Sometimes for really long fantasy books I will do this or at least do it for a portion of the book where I want to really get all the information. The way that my brain works is that that is sometimes the best way for me to process all of the information is to listen and read along physically. Again, this doesn't work for everybody, but for me it's great. And when I am listening and reading along physically, I am usually able to listen at about a three and a half times speed because that is my natural reading speed across the page. And so some people who are wondering how I read as many books as I do, this is a lot of it is that my brain just processes that information pretty quickly and I do read faster than the average reader. If your reading is not that fast that's fine there's nothing wrong with that. There are things you can do to slowly speed up your reading a little bit if that's something you're interested in doing but also you may not be interested in doing that and that's totally fine as well. I started reading very early. I've been a big reader since I was four years old so I've been doing it for a long time and then one thing that I think really helped increase my reading speed even more was going to grad school. I've talked to my friend Mara at Books Like Woe about this before because we've had pretty similar experiences with this, but when you go to grad school and you are expected to read high volumes of dense academic text very quickly for class the next day and have understood enough of it to be able to discuss it in class, you just it just kind of forces you to learn how to read and process quicker. And once you've been doing that with like academic articles, reading fiction <laughs> at a fast speed just isn't that hard anymore. And so I think that's probably part of what has allowed me to read as quickly as I do and actually process what's on the page. Speed also does depend on genre. There are some books that are more literary, have more dense writing or just more dense ideas in them and those books are going to take me longer to read. I'm It might be really slow going getting through certain types of books whereas I might pick up like a romance novel and just fly right through it. So part of it is how dense is the book that you're reading and you know I don't think it's a bad thing to have variation in this. I do read more difficult literary fiction, nonfiction, and classics but I also read like smutty romances so you know a little bit of everything because this is my entertainment right? So the equivalent of somebody watching like Survivor or whatever might be me reading this like fluffy book and I don't think there's anything wrong with that but it does affect reading speed. Another thing that is helpful for reading at a relatively quick rate is being willing to DNF books. DNF stands for do not finish and I've talked a lot about this on this channel. In fact I will link a live show that I did with some other people discussing how we approach DNFing books up above if you haven't seen it and you're interested in hearing some discussion of the topic. But I know for me and some other high volume readers this is a really important piece of keeping up momentum. If you get bogged down in a book that you are hating reading, you don't want to pick it up, 
up, you're just like dragging your feet through it, that is going to slow down your reading in general. And so if I get significantly into a book and I am not enjoying it, it's boring, I don't really care what's going to happen at the end, I may choose to just DNF it and say, you know what, this wasn't for me, I'm going to move on to something that I am more interested in reading because there are so many books out there that I do want to read. Why am I going to waste my time reading something that isn't working for me, even if it might be a great book for someone else? So being willing to DNF books that aren't working for you is really helpful. The other thing is, not only am I reading more than one book at once, but when I finish a book, I'll pretty immediately start another book. Even if it's just like a couple of chapters to kind of get into the groove of the next book, that is a practice that really helps me keep momentum going. One other thing that people might find helpful if they're trying to find a way to just read and process words on the page faster. I mean, there are videos you can go if you want to learn actual like speed reading that I'm not that interested in because I don't find it pleasurable to do that. And I'm partly reading for pleasure, partly for my job, which we'll talk a little bit about. Had to change the battery on the camera. But if you want something that you could try practicing to see if it helps you with your reading speed is either turning off or limiting the reading voice inside your head. And I'm also coming to realize there are some people who just don't have this and didn't realize that like when people said the voice inside your head, like it's a literal thing. It's a little literal thing if that's you. But this is called subvocalization. This is where when you are reading a text inside your head, there's the voice that's like reading every word back to you. And there are a few things that you can do about it. One is you can work on training that voice to read faster. One way to do this is by listening to audio books and reading along and slowly increasing the speed at which you listen to those audiobooks over time that will help your speed inside your head to be faster. You can also try to either stop sub vocalizing entirely or do what I realized I just sort of naturally do. And I hadn't thought about this until I watched someone talk about this in a video. And then I was like, oh, I do that. But the other thing is, is if you have a hard time just turning it off entirely, is you can get your sub vocalization to skip words, if that makes sense, where you're reading them with your eyes, but you're not like thinking every word, just like enough to get the context. And I hadn't realized I do this, but I do this not with every book that I read all the time, but especially if I'm just like really immersed in a story and getting through it really quickly is I don't sub vocalize every word. I'll like skip words in the sub vocalizing. This isn't skimming. I'm still like reading all of the words and processing them, but like the sub vocalize part skips it. Know if that makes I don't know if that makes sense or is helpful to people but if it does and it is helpful then you're welcome can I do an example okay so like as an example I'm, I'm currently reading Empire of Silence there's a sentence that says I sat in sullen silence glowering at the sea if I was reading this quickly and doing that like partial sub vocalized I'm, I might, in my head, it might be, I sat sullen silence glowering C. And the in-between words that aren't actually like creating most of the meaning, I wouldn't necessarily sub vocalize. So as an example of like how that might work, those are some things that you can try. It may work for you, it may not, but if what you wanna do is train yourself to read at a faster speed, those are some options. One other note that I do want to make because I get these comments, especially towards the end of the year when I'm like posting about all the books that I read in the year, is I'll get people sometimes not believing that I'm really reading that much or being like, I don't know how you do it or that seems impossible or I could never do that. It's always a little hard to respond to it because on the one hand, all the things that I said in this video are true. There are things you can do to help yourself read more. Now you can do all of those things and you still might not be reading at the rate that I do, but this is also my full-time job. Um, I am a full-time content creator in the book space. So my job that I do full-time is reading and reviewing books and making video content. And yes, it is true that I put a lot of time into production and editing and all of the sort of behind the scenes stuff that goes into running a channel, running a Patreon, or running a podcast. That is true. But I'm also able to dedicate more hours a week to reading than I think the average person is. 
because it's my job. So I might decide, hey, the video I'm gonna make for content this week is a reading vlog. And I might take two days where almost all I do is read and talk about it on a video. And in those two days, I might finish three or four books, but it's work. So I just think having that context is really important when you are comparing yourself to somebody that you see on YouTube. It's worth knowing that as booktubers, we read at a range of rates, but also our lives look very different, right? I am married with children, but I have a partner who is very active with caring for the children and taking care of the house. So I'm not doing it all by myself. I don't have another job. This is my full time job doing content creation. There are some booktubers where content creation is their full time job. There are other booktubers who work a day job and most of their time is dedicated to that. And what that job is and how much time they have for reading in it is going to impact how much they're able to read for their channel, especially if it's just a hobby. There are booktubers who have small children and have a lot of responsibilities there. There are booktubers who are single parents and have a ton of responsibility. There are others who are just married and don't have kids. There are some who are single and have no kids and they have a lot of time that they can dedicate to whatever pursuits they wanna have. My point is just that when you're watching a content creator and you're seeing how much they're reading and comparing your own life and your own reading to it, it's worth taking into consideration the fact that their circumstances might be really different from yours in ways that impact the amount of reading and the type of reading that they're able to do. So yeah, this is my job. I love it. I love books. I've always been a big reader. I love creating videos for everyone. I like reviewing books, but I also take it seriously as a profession and it is something that I invest a lot of time into. If this is just a hobby or a small part of your entertainment, that's cool too. My husband is not a big reader. He has been getting into reading a little bit more, which has been fun to see, but it's not his primary hobby of choice. So he might read like one book a month or sometimes a book every two months and that's fine. He's still a reader and that's great and that's valid and like him wanting to play video games more of the time while I'm reading is also completely valid. So all this to say, do you. Do what works for you. Do what works for your life. If some of the things I've talked about in this video seem useful and relevant and like something that you want to try out that could increase your reading because that's something that you want to do, awesome. That's great. Go for it. Or you might watch this and think, wow, that sounds like a lot of work and uh, I maybe don't actually want to do that because I like what I'm already doing. That is absolutely fine as well. Uh, <laughs> regardless, I hope this was interesting and informative and I'll probably be back in a couple of years to make another one of these yet again and update you guys on different ways to read more or how I approach my reading, but that is my most recent update. I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for your question of the day, talk to me about your entertainment. What do you choose to do for entertainment? Do you read a lot? Do you spend more time doing other things? And how do you balance those priorities in your life? I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. If you guys like this video, it does help if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time.